So much of the media we consume today is almost solely created to get that first click. In the boxing community, I'm talking about videos with titles like Trash Talking Boxer Gets Destroyed or Is This The Next Floyd Mayweather? But personally, I've never really wanted to make that kind of content on my channel because I think that clickbaity style of video just lacks some layers and a little bit of nuance. These videos do get your attention, sure, but very rarely do they stay with you after you've watched them. And what I find so interesting in boxing particularly is that you never really find a story or a person that is as simple as it seems on the surface. There's always two sides to every story, and so the videos that I create should always respect that more complicated reality. And that is where Art of Beterbiev comes into the mix. Because if you do a search on YouTube, you'll find tons of videos showing the guy as a one-dimensional wrecking machine. And while there is some truth in that, I don't think anyone really is looking any deeper into what makes the guy tick. And to me anyway, that is a real shame because I think Peterbiev has one of the most interesting stories in boxing today. However, I'm not going to argue that the thing that sets him apart from the rest is how calculated but brutally can be inside the ropes. About two rounds. Archer better be in. Will it be 14 for 14? as he comes out, and this fight is over. Better be it retains his title with a fifth round TKO. That high net length, but he's standing straight up, and he's, he's in trouble right here. He is he's in big trouble. And he got him on the That's chin, it. and down he goes. Campillo has hit the canvas. The guy is still dangling on the ropes. He's still up, and he's still legally you're right able here, to hit him. Right here, Paulie. Take a look. He yep. knows he's out right now. Yep. That's why he turns away like this and walks. He knew he was out from the right hand. The right hand really did damage. And I could just see the pedigree of Better Be a, You know, he just looks smarter. You know, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's breaking down Kalaiji. It's not just boxing. That's called power boxing from Better Be a. Woo! To start right from the start, Beterbiev was born in a city out in Dagestan, but he is actually of Chechen descent. Both Chechnya and Dagestan being two predominantly Muslim regions in southern Russia, kind of near Turkey. But anyway, Beterbiev's dream as a kid wasn't actually to win a world title or anything like that. It was actually to win Olympic gold. And to his credit, Beterbiev was pretty handy as an amateur, winning the 2009 AIBAs. However, he did end up falling short of that Olympic gold because of a certain Ukrainian jokester. You can find two fights between Usyk and Beterbiev here on YouTube, one from 2011 and the other from the 2012 Olympics. And to be honest, you can make a strong argument that these Usyk fights were actually harder than any of Beterbiev's pro fights. Round one. Both fights are pretty much as you'd expect. Usyk with the movement and consistency against Beterbiev with the power and the pressure. Usyk does end up getting the W both times, but I'd say that's mainly because a three round amateur fight was always going to favor Usyk's style. However, what I will say is that anyone who's dropping Usyk twice in six rounds has a hell of a lot of skill and definitely has some pop. One of these knockdowns was actually called illegal, but let's be honest, in the pros, this would have been called legit. And what I'll also say is that even in the amateurs, Beterbiev had very much a pro style. 
He doesn't just poke with the shots like a lot of amateurs do. He very much punches through the target. Better work there from the turf Good, solid right yeah. to the body. Should have scored. Eventually got us, man. He's really just backing him up now. You can see that same commitment in the shots that would serve him well in the pros in so many of Materbiev's amateur fights. And despite never winning Olympic gold, that didn't mean he was going to struggle as a pro. Viterbiev is brutal in the ring. There is no way around that. But to be honest, very rarely do I see boxing fans break down what his brutal style actually is in practice. How I'd kind of describe him is a pressure fighter, but a pressure fighter who likes to initiate from range. You're not going to see Viterbiev come forward with head movement like Mike Tyson, but what you're going to see instead is Viterbiev holding the center of the ring and getting some respect from his opponents via a basic jab or that very heavy right hand to the body, the same one that he dropped Dusik with. So much. He got hurt in round one, and I think the power's in his mind. Better be of, better be of has an awesome amount of power, and uh, I think Campillo, having experienced his overthinking process right now. These two. Good right hand to the body. And there's another right hand to the body from Better BF as Vostik takes a step back near those ropes. And then he comes in with a right uppercut as Beterbiev trying to time him. After Beterbiev has the opponent under control, the next step is to close the range. And he can do this in two ways. The first is again just using that very basic simple jab. And the second is a bit of a Russian specialty. And it's what I'm going to call a Russian power jab. How it works is Beterbiev will feint the right hand. And in doing so, he'll put all his weight on his left side. At this point, Beterbiev's legs are loaded and he can then leap forward both feet off the floor with a power jab. Oh, a beautiful leaps in. Right it's a pretty simple technique to be honest, but it can be so effective in closing the range quickly. And there is one other little trick that Beterbiev has up his sleeve. What you'll sometimes see him do is throw a right hand, and while he's actually throwing the shot, he'll be transitioning into a southpaw stance. The benefit of this being that he can basically get more power on the left hand because it's now at the back. In all, this technique is basically a reverse one-two. trying to recover better be at you see both of these techniques i'm assuming are pretty common in the russian amateur system because if you watch a few Baterbiev or kovalev fights you will see these kind of techniques more than once Ward shaking his head but kovalev is piercing his guard and landing hard shots anyway now that Baterbiev has fully closed the range this is where he gets to do the most damage. And he does this via some great touch-touch whip kind of combinations combined with some incredible physical strength. And now better be of a swarming here in the midst of round nine. Vostik ties up. But see that sequence right there where there wasn't really any clean punches landed, but they tangle up and better be a pushes both stick off and then walks right to him and pushes him off again. That's almost the equivalent of getting hit with two head shots and three body shots. That's Training. a lot to do. And as I've said before, Baterbia being just so physically strong maybe shouldn't be too much of a surprise because in Dagestan, it is wrestling, not boxing, which is king. In fact, you might have heard of someone else who's from there. Nurmagomedov under the chin, there's the top! Khabib Nurmagomedov, 28 and 0! Incredible, absolutely incredible the way he dominates people in the grappling. Never seen anything like it. 
Viterbiev was no Khabib on the map, don't get me wrong, but he did actually do a bit of wrestling as a kid. So it really wouldn't surprise me if some of this strength in the clinch comes from that background and just growing up around so many wrestlers back in Dagestan. Cannot last too much longer. He's trapped in the corner, taking punches. He's trying to throw back them to no avail and he goes down again. This time flat on his stomach and really, does he want to take any more of this? The referee's continuing the count and I think he may well have had enough. I think he's going to sit this one out and Tavoris Cloud is down. So this is just about the Paterbiev that most of you know, a brutal stone-faced Russian KO machine. But what a lot of you probably don't know is that outside of the ring, Paterbiev is about as sweet as they come. In fact, this is a guy that really does care about his opponents in the ring. When I yeah, punch you, him in this one, you see he's already this one. Out. This one, you I, stop I, I already stopped. Stop the I don't down. want but. Because he knows that he's, he's already knocked out. After like someone down, in your mind you change, like you watch for the situation, different vision. Like to me, I want to some helping or take care of him. In my mind, it's not like a real beast. You know, it's like I want to win this fight. But after me, I don't want to hurt someone to forever. You know. Viterbiev is human at the end of the day. So maybe hearing him say something like this shouldn't be that surprising. But I do think a pretty core cool reason for this humanity is that Paterbiev is a family man at heart. He's already got the full wife and kids package in Montreal and he is getting round to his late 30s now. This isn't a guy with anything to prove. This is a guy who already understands what is truly important in life. Before it was a difficult time because uh, I didn't speak language, I don't know French and English and we didn't have friends. But now yeah I like a little bit later as mom's come like one one year mom's come like getting better better. My mom has four four sons and I'm youngest one. Chichan traditional is youngest one stay with her parents. I'm happy my mom uh, decided to stay with me. <laughs> to be father is very interesting feelings. Like you understand, re really understand when you have kids. I think you have more respect for your parents when you have kids. <laughs> But despite how caring he can seem now, Baturbiev did not have an easy childhood. He grew up in a small Dagestani city during the two Chechen Russian wars. And to cut a long story short, these were two wars for Chechen independence, and Baturbiev grew up pretty close to all this fighting. And that meant that conflict and refugees spilling over near his home was pretty normal. But in addition to all this fighting going on around him, Viterbiev had another trauma that he had to deal with as a kid. And this wasn't something as big and loud as any war, but it was something that hit much closer to home. Something that really changed Viterbiev's path forever. My father is, you know, he never liked box uh, until I won a bronze medal junior championship and my father's friends, my whole family friends, you know, they all come to our house and do congratulations to my father, you know, it's, and he tells me after that, yeah, if you like box, go. And after uh, it's happened, like five days, my, my father is die uh, in a uh, car accident. <laughs> I've done. Okay. Okay. My father is die 
one year, almost one year, not not full year, and uh, I receive uh, invitation from Moscow. I remember I'm like very, very sad. Yeah, you, blockable you, on me. Well, I feel very bad, and uh, I don't want to st uh, continue box or anything, anything. And uh, my mom, I remember my mom tell me go to Moscow, and I decide to go and. If I not listen to my mom, uh, it mean maybe I'm not here today, you know? <laughs> it's good to listen to parents. Yeah, Andy. how do you think? And coaches. Coaches? Coaches too. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, okay. if I'm not listening to my parents, <laughs> I never listen to my coach too, I think so. <laughs> no? Exactly. 65, take a strap. I'm pretty fortunate never to have been in Paterbiev's position. All my family have lived to a ripe old age, and so I don't know what it's like to lose someone like that so young. Whether you do end up eventually getting past it and moving on, or whether it's something that you just have to grapple with every day, I really don't know. All I know is that Baturbiev still doesn't really talk about his dad much in interviews, and so I get the vibe that it's a pain that he still very much carries. And so maybe after dealing with all that trauma, the prospect of moving out to Canada wasn't really that scary for him. He ended up settling down in Montreal with Mark Ramsey as trainer, a trainer that seems to specialize in light heavyweights, previously training both Jean Pascal and Elader Alvarez. Settling down in a country with a different language must be pretty difficult in itself, but at least with Mark as trainer, I don't get the sense that Baturbio had any issues fitting in in the gyms. Is it too much or are you good? Is it good? I met Mark, I remember, first day when I arrived here. Yeah. Even when we do just job, like yeah. fit and job. We sit in uh, coffee coffee shop and uh, we have coffee since that time I drink coffee <laughs> I before before I came to Montreal I never drink coffee and now I'm coffee man <laughs> Mark tell me I know you I follow you since 2007 after we we have trainings together I remember Mark Mark tell me tomorrow you have big problem you have sparring with both but Zan Pascal and the uh, later and I tell him they have a problem not me <laughs> I've been involved in boxing media and content creation for about five years now and so I can pretty safely say that this guy has the scariest modern gym stories I've ever heard I mean we all know that sparring stories should be taken with a pinch of salt but after seeing Baturbiev on fight day I really don't doubt that he's pretty terrifying in the gyms too. Okay guys, come around. Ramsey has a strict policy in his gym. Sparring is not to be filmed. But even after the workout was over, the carnage left behind was evident for all to see. <laughs> but you know this, right? I know. I know. I'm used to being able to push through. <laughs> After taking the time to sit down and watch literally all of Baturbiev's pro fights, the thing that really stands out is both the punching power and the physical strength. Some boxers have what is called explosive power, Guys like Adonis Stevenson or Deontay Wilder. Guys who generate power via those fast twitch muscle fibers. The punches that just seem to come out of nowhere and lay the other guy out. There's the jab by Nonito Donaire at working well. Oh my God, Darginian down for the first time! And other fighters have what is called thudding power. Punches that don't necessarily have much speed on them, but you can definitely see the weight behind them. Think guys like Joe Joyce or, to a lesser extent, Gennady Golovkin. And Baturbiev is very much in this category. It's not like the punches are amazingly quick or anything, 
but if you imagine someone with a sandbag in each glove, that's kind of what it looks like in the ring. But the physical strength of Better Be Ev is starting to wear down Kalijas. It's not just the punches, it's the mauling inside, it's, it's the pushing back of Kalijas that Better Be Ev is doing, as well as the body work. And then the head shots to top it off. It's just not looking good for the young fighter Kalijas right now. And as I say, there is a lot of technique in there too. Varying up the punches with the lead hands, hooks and uppercuts, just a lot. And the guy clearly only ever wants to make himself better and better with each fight. And that's kind of epitomized in a perturbi of saying that comes up over and over. Just get down. Bang! Hey. He always says, I want to be a good boxer one day. So whenever we show him something, he'll be like, if I keep learning, I'm going to be a good boxer one day. There you go. The lower you get, the stronger you'll be. You know my, my goal, yeah? <laughs> Andre, you yeah. know my goal. I know. What, what's my goal? What's I, my goal? I know. To retire undefeated. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> my goal is to, to, to become a good boxer. Ah, yeah. That, that's Why always... you forget? I hope one day I became a good boxer. <laughs> today, today what we have, what we have, you know. <laughs> you already have two belts. Yeah, the belts say something different. It's not about belts, you know. Even even I have more like the next day, like uh, four belts. It's not. It's mean. It's it's not mean like I'm a good boxer. <laughs> So really what we've got here is a disciplined power punching pressure fighter with surprisingly good technique. So the question is, how do you actually beat this guy? In my humble opinion, Viterbiev's only real weakness is that because he is so strong and because he hits so hard, he's never really had to learn much in the way of defense when he's under fire. If you do throw a few shots his way, Viterbiev's tendency is pretty much just to step back in a straight line and keep both hands up. It's not the most educated way of doing it, put it like that. Right hand. Beautiful combinations. That's exactly how you keep a puncher away. You gotta let his hands go, and that's exactly what Bozdick is doing at the moment. Letting his hands go at the right moment. There's a right hand to the body from Alexander mm. Bozdick as he was able. And say after this, the opponent starts to have even more success and really opens up against Baturbiev. What does he do then? Well, it's not a safety first come in and clinch technique. It's not really to slip and roll. It is instead to fight fire with fire in exchanges. And my issue with this is that, yeah, it's a battle that Baturbiev pretty much always wins because he is so strong and hits so hard. But if you watch some of these clips back, you can see that he's not really that educated in his work here. And so what that means is that Baturbiev is definitely hittable if you go at him and force these kind of exchanges. And you saw that tactic pretty much to a T in the Callum Johnson fight. And the one, Callum Johnson. 174.8 for Johnson. 174.8. Whether Joe Gallagher, Johnson's trainer, saw the same weakness in Baturvia as me, or whether coming forward is just the only way Johnson can fight, is very much up for debate. But either way, Johnson had more success here than pretty much everyone else by doing exactly that, by going at Baturbiev and forcing some exchanges. Underway here in round one. Jab. Nice tight jab and then tries with a right hand, blocked by Johnson. Now Smith, well, Johnson has him in the corner, he's backed out immediately. Now to the body. Better be a dangerous already. That better be a puts out there. Well, it's, it, apparently it works. It hits hard and now they start to trade. Better be up immediately. Johnson gets Better be up in the corner again. Better be up has to fight out. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. oh, and he drops him. The referee had said no. Three, but then Johnson four, had gotten back into the five, ring and then was hit by six, Better be up. 
Hey, you okay? Would you like to continue? Celestino Ruiz is allowing that to go. He had just said stop. But Better be now moves in and maybe for the kill. And Johnson has a moment to clear his head. All right, a lot happened there, even though it wasn't an enormous amount. But he had said stop. Better be have waited. He did not want to throw Ray an illegal so shot. You can sense so that. Even your head through the rope, but then as soon as his head right? came back no, in, okay, better be have right? pounced yeah, and yeah. dropped him. Right. So that is a knockdown in round one. You can see the power evident from Better Biev. It could have been worse. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. If he had 10 more seconds. Johnson is right in front of him. Better Biev looks to get a little distance. Lands another right hand and then over the top. He continues the attack and continues to rough up Johnson. And short <laughs> Watch Johnson jump on him now. He's in trouble. You want to continue? Callum Johnson with a chance at the title drops Better Biev with a left hook. Well, he has to feel very differently about himself now, Ray, doesn't he? Oh, oh, for sure. Because he's in there with a dangerous man who can box, who can try and dropped him in the previous round. Maybe it could have finished him if he had a little more time. And now he knows, wait, my power carries on this guy. That's a 10-8 round for Callum Johnson, and it changes the nature of this fight. Big, big round. Gavin McDonald. Okay, come on, champion. Whew. The British Commonwealth light heavyweight champion, big challenge in the fight of his life, but has a knockdown already, and hits better be with a right hand. He's able to find his range, he's staying close. Well, look, Johnson at a certain point can't keep holding that arm. And good job by Ruiz saying, let him fight out of that. Dangerous shots, Johnson to go with and lands with that arm. Oh my God. Better be <laughs> decides to keep punching. Good action at the end of the round. That was, those were great vicious shots. Both guys are throwing short shots, powerful shots, and they're taking them too. They are really absorbing the punches. Shot, you're coming wide. Right, so the there is the cut. Put in the middle. Both shots are wide, and he's put his hands up to the air muffs, all right? So come up the middle. That's all he's trying to do in you as well. Keep it nice and tight down the middle. Show, show you better, boxer. Good defense. But the, what was happening here, they're not just wheeling on the way, they're thinking. They're trying to set each other up. And those are, like we saw the jab to the head and then the body from Better Be Up. Those are thudding, poleaxing shots. They'll stop you in your tracks. Good hook again by Johnson. That clearly is his best weapon. Yeah. And he's been true to his word. He won't have to chase me. I'm sure I won't have to chase him. This is going to be explosive. He was talking that up in the right pre-fight. And he did try with the right hand there. Just missed. But he, he has been... Exactly as advertised, he has come in swinging. Nothing but knockouts so far in his career. 12 fights, 12 KOs. Oh, Johnson goes down a right hand. That was just a grazing right hand. Three. Johnson Four. melts in front of him. Five. Six. He does not look Seven. good. Eight. Nine. Ten. It's over. It happens that fast. He has that type of power. His punches are that short. You barely see it, and Johnson goes out. I dripped my eyes, and he was down. Yep. Your winner by knockout, and still the IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, Artur the Serbian. At the end of the day, the result was indeed the same. But I think it did show that if you stand your ground a bit and are willing to exchange, you can have your moments against Baturbiev. I just don't think you can really beat this guy by boxing and moving for 12 like Marcus Brown or Alexander Gvodsik. Because at the end of the day, Baturbiev will hunt you down and absolutely destroy you. Still trying to recover. Better be if you see. Round just stationary. Better be is able to turn him. He's able to get different angles. Ten seconds remaining here in round seven. 
Even with the blood flowing, you gotta give so much credit to the champion out of better be out. He's creating these angles. He's using Marcus Brown's body to push him and sidestep him. But to be honest, Baturbiev's promotional problems outside of the ring has probably caused more issues than any of his actual opponents. In a previous version of this script, so I ended up writing about three paragraphs on all these disputes, but I stopped when it sounded more like me reciting a college law thesis than a vaguely entertaining YouTube vid. But the core of it is that Paterbiev has moved around a lot promotional-wise in his career, from Yvonne Michel to Al Heyman to Eddie Hearn and now to Top Rank, with co-promotional deals, disputes and legal action all going on in the background. It is a bit of a shit show, not gonna lie. But through all of this, Baturbiev at least had his religion to fall back on. And like Khabib, you do get the impression that while boxing and MMA is important for these guys, it doesn't even come close to how important their religion is and just their way of life. I don't think about like uh, being Muslim is helping for me for sport or not, you know. We think about like to do good things, to be happy God, you know. I don't want to mix sport and religion, you know. I don't like that, you know, because sport is one day is finished, you know, religion we have for all life. In your heart, you feel good. Being such a devout Muslim living in a Western country, I'm sure has its own challenges. But what I find far more interesting is Baturbiev's relationship with a certain individual, someone outside his own family. As I've already said, Baturbiev was born in Dagestan, but he is of course of Chechen descent. And because he's arguably the most famous active Chechen athlete, he's developed a cozy-ish relationship with the Chechen dictator, Ramzan Kadyrov. Kadyrov is your pretty textbook strongman dictator. Think kidnappings and police brutality, that sort of thing. But the reason you might have already heard of Kadyrov is that a few years ago, there were plenty of accusations of, let's say, people doing bad things to gay people in the region. I wanted to ask you about the alleged roundup, abduction and, and torture of, of gay men in the Republic. Um, what, Mr. President, do you want to, to say about that? But do you not get concerned when you read these accounts of young men who say they've been tortured for days and delivered to their families in sacks? Does it concern you as a matter of law and order in the Republic when you hear these stories? придумали, они шайтаны, они подаженные, они не люди, и будь они прокляты за то, что они на нас наговаривают, они перед Всевышним все равно ответят за это. How much of a true friendship exists between Baturbiev and Kadyrov, I really don't know. But I think at a minimum they seem to be reaping some benefits off each other. For Kadyrov, he gets the flaunt around Baturbiev as a symbol of Chechen toughness. And as for Baturbiev, he was given a Mercedes Benz and was also given an honorary title. I'm not really a person who calls the fighters to denounce dictators of their homeland like some people do. At the end of the day, so many of these sports people are exactly that. They're sports people, not politicians. 
Most have no interest in politics, and so I don't really blame anyone for not being particularly engaged with it. And also, with Perturbi of living in Russia for so long, still having family out there, and I'm assuming still consuming a load of Chechen media, I think it's more difficult than a lot of people think to almost change your perspective on the world. But what I find also interesting politics-wise is that with the whole Russia-Ukraine situation going on, it brings up a load of really interesting questions. Should Baturbia be denouncing the war? Should he be added to a sanctions list, both being Russian and also having links to Kadyrov? Or should the fact that he has a dual citizenship as a Canadian-Russian exempt him from all this stuff? It's these type of questions that, while they don't exactly set the YouTube algorithm alight, I just find so interesting. And so, hopefully now, you can see why I find it such a shame that so many people in the YouTube boxing community just seem to be taking Baturbi of at face value and not digging any deeper. Because, in truth, the guy has so many layers, be it being a family man, a Muslim, an immigrant who lost their dad at such a young age, that to portray the guy as just a stone-faced Russian killer is only one side of a man who's got one of the most unique stories in boxing today. In truth, I have enough notes to probably make this video twice as long as what it is, but what I hope I have done here is inject some nuance and a little bit of humanity into what so many people call purely the beast. <laughs> make you the boxer that you want to be? What would make you the boxer that you want to be? Wow. What, do you, what, what, <laughs> what are you going to be satisfied about what you are as a boxer? When? Not about boxing. I don't know why I talk. I, I can explain. Because it's, it's, no, mais c'est vraiment quelque chose de particulier parce que c'est une philosophie qui est vraiment développée dans le gymnase. Si tu lui demandes c'est quand, c'est quel son meilleur combat, il va te dire que c'est dans l'avenir. Oui, tu lui demandes si, est-ce qu'il est un bon boxeur Non, pas encore, mais je travaille fort là-dessus. Mm -hmm. Il ne il fait pas juste dire ça pour le dire, il, il dit pour s'auto-motiver à continuer, à ne pas être sur le cruise control, à, à rester, à essayer de faire des détails qui font qu'à chaque journée, il peut être un meilleur boxeur. Oui. Oui. <laughs> <laughs>